Hello everyone. I'm Eli the Fatigued. We're back with Dragon Claw. Hello. Playing some more Warframe. So this is gonna be one of our fishing episodes. I don't know how many fishing episodes we're gonna have. It might be two or three depending on how I split it up. Mm-hmm. But we both like fishing and it's a great way to earn standing. Especially now that I have the resource booster thingy. Mm-hmm. Catchy, what what? Go. Jerks. Get back here. Get him, Max. Good dog. Alright. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a hot spot over here? Doesn't look like we have a hot spot on this side of the lake. So, oh well. Alright. Well. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna fish over here because I think, if I remember right, uh, having us fish right next to each other uh, does not work. Well. Uh -huh. Yeah, scares away the fish. I'm gonna fish over here. Alrighty. Unless there's a hot spot, then we can fish together. Yeah. Anyways, so how's your D&D uh, &D thing been going, or have you not been doing that lately? Uh, we haven't been doing it lately. Scheduling issues, you know, D&D. Uh, &D. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah. Unfortunate, so. but... <clears throat> Family D&D hasn't been going for a while either, unfortunately. And that's just because, you know, the pandemic and all that happened. Yeah. Yeah, no. My, uh, Wednesday night group, D&D, that's been going on for a couple of years now. Uh, we've had to move it to Mondays, and then we might be moving it to Saturdays, all depending on, uh, what, uh, one of our players' job schedule ends up being like for the uh, semester. Yeah, that's fair jobs or so, thing. Yep. But I can say we've probably been going at it for two years basically straight. As long as there's uh, been school in session, we've been doing it, so. Yeah, any D&D &D player's dream. Good dog, Max. Yeah. Keep digging stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that dig mod. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, oh, did I tell you that Hannah started her own campaign? I think so, yeah, it was with you and Denro. Uh, no, it no? was, um, so it's what we call it our married group, so we have my group uh, and then our married group. Yes, I do remember Because, this. yeah, because it's with our upstairs neighbors and then with some of our dance friends. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually playing a paladin in that one, a human paladin. I am, like, the most basic race, and it is quite fun. The most basic, you're not wrong, yeah. <laughs> Because, I mean, like, if you like a D&D, &D, what are humans? What are they known for? Hmm, above average farming skills. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's actually been quite fun playing a paladin. Yeah, paladins are actually pretty fun. I had a, mm. a fighter that I played as for a while in a, uh, in a group that I played with for a while until kind of just left for various reasons. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah. I was originally a fighter. I forget the kind of fighter I was. Oh, I was a battle master, that's right. Battle master's really fun, uh, by the way. Yeah. You can battle do... masters are fun. Yeah. So I was a battle master originally, and then there was some story stuff that, that happened, and then it was also an undead campaign where we fought a lot of undead, so I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I should become a paladin because there's so many paladins around. And uh, there was a story thing that where this girl we were trying to save died. It was this little girl, probably like five mm -hmm. or six or something. 
and <clears throat> it's a very dark campaign. And so yeah. my character, I thought it would be fun, good character development to um, have him become a Path of Redemption Paladin. Oath of, uh, Oath of, Oath of Redemption Paladin. Oath of Redemption Paladin. Mm -hmm. Those guys are actually really cool. Was it Redemption or what's the other one? Well, so if you're thinking of stuff from Xanthar's Guide to everything, um, and that one they have Redemption and Conquest. No, um, I think it was Redemption. It might have been another one, but basically, yeah, they... basically he felt incredibly guilty that he let the girl die. Uh, because mm -hmm. there was not much he could do at the time because he wasn't powerful enough, so he decided to become a paladin in order to redeem himself. I think it was redemption. Mm -hmm. and... That would make the most sense story-wise. And to be able to save people in the future. <clears throat> mm. So, yeah, and there was a lot of other on plot stuff that the DM mm. created for that character. It's just, I don't know. <clears throat> it became too focused on one of the, the players and their mm. character all the time, and I was just like, I'd like to do stuff, but they're like talking all the time, and there's other reasons that I eventually stopped yeah. playing with that group. Yeah, no, understandable. Yeah. With uh, my paladin, it's kind of funny because uh, he actually, um, his story for becoming a paladin is uh, that basically he was an urchin, and then um, his, the person who would, you know, become his adopted father basically found him fighting on the streets and said, "No, oh, you're not going to be causing this problem." I I heard yeah. urgent. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, an urchin. Fine. Continue. Yeah, an urchin, and uh, his. His would-be father found him on the street and was like, "You're not going to be causing these fighting problems anymore." And took him and taught him how to basically be a paladin. Nice. Yeah. So he has kind of like this um, sort of reformed story, like backstory, like you know, being a person on the street to you know a man of religion. Yeah. So he's actually like really laid back with stuff. He's like, you know, I used to do a bunch of not great stuff, so I'm not gonna yell at people for not doing great stuff. Yeah, he was already redeemed, so to speak. Yeah, he's like, I, I'm. If they do something that breaks the law, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll get after them, but I'm not gonna go shoving my religion down their throat. That's fair. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> something that no one else in the party actually knows, and that's only between uh my wife, who's the DM, and I, is that, uh, Ooh, she there's actually a hot spot has here. some... Oh, okay. I'm a coming. Is he actually has some, uh, trauma in regards to, um, his dad. Mm -hmm. Because him and his dad were, uh, and a couple of other guys were sent to, uh, take care of, um, a, uh... I missed. I'm, I messed up that shot, too. <laughs> But uh, we're sent to take care of a uh, wizard that was trying to open up a portal to one of the nine hells. Mm -hmm. And um, so they got there a little too late, so a demon was able to get through. And um, in the process of basically subduing the demon and having everyone fall back, um, my character saw his dad get ripped in half by the demon. Nice! Yeah, so he, ever since then, he's had a bit of a drinking problem. I don't blame him. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. Because it's funny, because I introduced him, he just, as this paladin, that drinks, everyone's like, why does he drink? And I'm like, you'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't blame him. And on that kind of like drinking line, there was this really funny um, time when he uh, <laughs> he followed uh, the fighter uh, who is a tiefling um, to the black market because you know he's like you know I'll go with you I can just you know leave my shield and other stuff that denotes me as a paladin. Mm -hmm. um, 
with uh, with the rest of our group and, you know, I'll just go with you because it's information I want to know too. And uh, they get there and, you know, as just like a side thing, he orders some ale. And, you know, since they're talking to black market people, the black market people say, we'll get you some really good ale. Mm. You know, and it's like one of the best dwarven ales in, canonically in the world. And, oh, I've got a story about dwarven uh, ale uh, in a second when you're done. <laughs> My wife was like, all right, so if like almost every few drinks you are going to need to make a constitution so yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's like the strongest ale. It's brewed by dwarves. You know, I, I'm, I'm expecting that. The entire time, I don't think I rolled lower than maybe a 15. Nice. <laughs> She's like, she just looked at me and was like, dear, you are lucky. <laughs> she, mm -hmm. she really wanted me to roll, uh, to roll lower. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the only side effects I got while I was drinking until the alcohol kicked in was, uh, I, I coughed and wheezed a little bit and some uh, tears came to my eyes, but that was about it. <laughs> Nice. Mm hmm Anyways, your story? Um, so... There was Dwarven Fire Whiskey, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, one of the guys in the party's like, Oh yeah, I can drink it. And he takes basically part of a shot of it and passes out. <laughs> he rolled like a 21 constitution, but he still mm -hmm. passed out. Because it's a DC-30, we found out later. Um, and so he buys this whole bottle of Dwarven Fire Whiskey, because he's also now addicted to it. Um, because he then failed his the addiction save, or whatever, I, I forget. And so... That's actually kind of smart for a DM to do. That, uh, I will now have to do that in my games. Yes. So, uh, it took him forever to actually... Get, uh, kick him, uh, kick the habit of it, but at the same time, we also kept taking it and hiding it from him, because <laughs> every time he took a shot, he would pass out drunk. <laughs> it was like one shot. He didn't even get to enjoy the drunk state. No, he just went no, right no. to blackout. Pass exactly. Out. Yes. So we, uh, we all took turns hiding it. Oops, that's my first time I filmed that. We all took turns hiding it from him, and it was hilarious. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. Oh, so another thing with my paladin, this isn't a lot any alcohol story, but mm -hmm. the way I built him is to be very heavy on the AC. Well, yes, that's how and, you build a paladin. Uh, yeah. Well, the this particular paladin subclass that I chose, uh, Oath of the Crown, mm -hmm. is really <laughs> good for like wanting to do a high AC paladin and um, basically make it so that way the rest of your party can be as squishy as they want and, you know, you you ha have everyone basically focus fire on you. Mm -hmm. yeah, what the fighter really likes to do with me is, uh, since he's a battle master, is bait and switch. Oh, battle master, yeah. So uh, my battle master, uh, he was, yeah, battle master fighter and oath of uh, redemption paladin. Mm -hmm. And... So, one of my favorite things to do was literally just go running into combat and put my shield up, because it was a magical shield that I got that uh, uh, would s float next to me for 60 seconds for a minute. Oh, that that's nice. <laughs> yeah. And it would defend me without me having to use it. Um, like, I could use a two-handed sword or two one-handed swords, which I did. And that is nice. <laughs> it was stupid broken. So I also had this um, this sword. I forget what it was called, but it was a sentient sword um, with imbued with light. I th if, I th if I remember the lore that I got for it later out of character, because my DM liked to talk to me about stuff because he knew I wouldn't uh, tell it to other players. Game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't use my out of game knowledge in game uh, meta game. So to speak, is that it was a darkness, um, uh, some powerful dark force guy, evil guy, who was then sealed in this sword of light. And so he could only use the light powers in the sword. 
Nice. Yeah, it was hilarious and so good. <laughs> I, I do like that DM, I just, I don't know, I got tired of that crew. Mm hmm Yeah, no, that, that happens. Ooh, an Echo Winder, finally. But, yeah, um... I will say my wife gets super frustrated with the fighter and I just because of how buffed <laughs> we get my AC. Mm -hmm. In combat, she's like, I have to buff everything that's to hit just to hit you, dear. Mm -hmm. Just like, tell her to use stuff with deck saves. That that would screw me over. Yeah, that's that's what I do for our uh, cleric that I've super buffed to have. I think total of twenty seven AC. So I've given him some awesome magic items, including a, basically a mech suit. Oh, yeah, I remember me fighting him um, as my werewolf form. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Which was really fun, by the way. Mm -hmm. I really liked it. I don't it. think he liked how I could just teleport around him <laughs> and basically smack him. Well, yeah, you were pretty overpowered. But that was the whole point. Granted, you know, I was like, what, 20 levels over him? Yeah. You guys were heroes from the original campaign, so mm -hmm. <laughs> several hundred yeah. years later, of course, you're going to be more powerful. Mm -hmm. Not to mention my werewolf form. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, God, come on. I'm just missing like crazy today. Eh, that happens. You're spearfishing, you're trying to predict where the fish will go. It doesn't always work out. <clears throat> Indeed. <sighs> but... Yeah... Thing is, I have picked up the uh, feat called Shield uh, Shield Master. Mm, so, yeah, I just need to bump up my dex one more point, so that way it actually will give me a plus two to my dex saves instead of a plus one to my dex saves, because I have a minus one to my dex saves. Yikes. Yeah. My wife wanted all of us to start out with at least one, um, one stat in the negative. That's fair. To make it a little bit more interesting. So, my stat that started in the negative was my dexterity, because I'm like, I don't really need this. <laughs> what I need is constitution, strength, and charisma. <laughs> Which, honestly, for a paladin is kind of what you do need. Mm-hmm. So was able to uh, get the um, uh, armor mastery feat, which made it so that way I uh, the heavy armor. I re huh? The heavy armor mastery. The, uh, it's something along that lines of it. It's where you reduce uh, damage by three from um, bludgeoning, piercing, and oh, slashing. Oh yeah, yeah, I know the one you're talking about. <clears throat> <clears throat> which is super nice. It's just like, oh, you're hitting me with a. Uh, with a sword, yeah, that'll be reduced by three. Oh, you only did three <laughs> damage. <laughs> uh, lovely. Indeed. Yeah, but I'm super excited for tomorrow because we're finally going to meet up with that group again after like a month of not being able to meet. Nice. Yeah, and I'm super excited. I missed. No, <clears throat> it's gone. Huh. 
that moment when you hit a, uh, one of the fish that you weren't <laughs> aiming for. Right. It, well, actually, it's more along the lines of aiming for a fish than another fish I didn't even see. <laughs> It's like, wait, I still hit the fish, but why is he moving away? Oh, there's another fish. Yes, Internet, I'm about as blind as a bat, even though I don't have glasses or contacts. Hmm. <laughs> Ever since I took that, uh... Allergy relief stuff. <clears throat> I'm coughing like crazy. I'm sorry. Or, sorry, my brain just deleted what you said, so. Ever since I took that allergy stuff earlier, I've been coughing like crazy. Ah. <clears throat> Pretty sure it's yeah. sinus drainage. Might be too much TMI. But oh. What streamer doesn't accidentally overshare occasionally? Right. How did I miss three times in a row? I know that feeling. Any miss? Anyways, the group that uh, I DM for, they're getting um, pretty close. Well, they've actually finally completed the first, what I call, chapter of the um, campaign. And yes. they're finally on to the second one. <laughs> Check. Gives you any indication how long of a campaign I have made. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically, I only put th what I consider three chapters in the campaign. Which, in essence, are basically, if you want to consider three different things in a campaign. So... It's, uh... They're getting, uh... The first chapter was finding out that the world's um, magical defenses are basically, you know, falling apart. And that, uh... The dragons need to basically get together and fix the problems. Mm -hmm. And now it's uh, about getting the dragons together, um, convincing at least a few of the key uh, dragon gods to realize that, hey, we actually should meet because there's this huge thing going on. <laughs> and we kind of need to fix it. <laughs> and then the third chapter will be them helping the dragons fix it. So, it's also kind of funny because uh, Hannah is playing a rogue, mm -hmm. but she just multi-class into an artificer because she, 
throughout the first bit of the you know campaign she got really into alchemy and stuff like that and so i talked with her and she's just like we made her the uh you know the this world's first canonical artificer nice. the first artificer to be <laughs> in this world And because of that, you know, she's only allowed to do the alchemist archetype because all the other stuff is a bit too advanced for the world. That's fair. I get that, you know, magic can make it happen, but also at the same time, you know, I kind of want to fit it within the realm of possibility. Like, if you're the first artificer in the world, I don't think you're going to be, you know, doing a battlesmith artificer as the first one. Okay. I don't know, maybe. I'll I guess it really kind of depends on yeah, it depends on the DM and depends on what type of world they have going. Yeah. <clears throat> I just know in most of the artificer uh, lore and stuff, the alchemist is the oldest archetype. So that's why I said that you know could only really do alchemist, and plus alchemist focuses a lot on potions, which is what she wants to do anyways. We're the biggest nerds, you know that? Yeah, I know. Yesterday was Star Wars Day. We were playing Star Wars games most of the evening. Mm -hmm. Today, we're playing Warframe. We're talking about D&D. Yep. <laughs> we are the biggest nerds, and I love it. <clears throat> I mean, not to toot my own horn, but I have 16 D&D books. <laughs> That's fair. And they can't all fit on one shelf without it bending the wood shelf that they <laughs> lay on. That is how much they weigh. <laughs> Alright, you just about ready to go turn in these fish? Yeah. I mean, I just had to take a break there to use my hands, even though no one can see my hands. Because, yeah. you know. <laughs> Starlight Violet does that too. She's a big hand talker. I used to be a big hand talker. I don't know what happened. Maybe the internet happened. I don't know. Hmm. It kind of depends on my mood if I use my hands a lot or not. That's fair. Yeah, that's cool. If I'm trying to be very expressive or um, am very uh, angry is when I usually end up using my hands a lot. I is got what I kind of found out. Hundred like sixty fish, I think. I'll get a more accurate count once we end. <clears throat> Once we uh, exit the elevator. Hey man, still a lot of fish. <laughs> yeah. I counted third, like one of my fish had thirty-two on it. And I'm like, holy moly! Uh, Twenty-four, sixty, hundred and forty something. Yeah, like a hundred sixty, hundred seventy fish. <clears throat> I mean, I do have the resource booster thing, but still. I wasn't always about the preservation of life. Part with some of your catch. We'll separate their components and distribute them to the needy. There's certainly enough of them. Hmm. Simple. Strip back design. A bit primitive, but handsomely made. Well, this specimen's quite complex. Heavily modified. Fascinating. I'll find those who need the parts. Okay, so 68. Fortuna's rig are in constant need of parts and repair, and many can't afford it. Share some of your catch. They'll remember. I'm just gonna have to provide all. Yeah, that didn't even get me maxed out. Sad. <laughs> yeah, fishing doesn't reel in a Bring it to me. As far as it is, it's, uh, it feels like know, it used to give more. I don't know. Say, so I remember us doing this for hours and doing mm -hmm. really well with it. Maybe that's what it was. We'd spent hours doing. It. <laughs> yeah, just, just sitting there throwing a spear into all water, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it's better than uh, sitting there with a, uh, you know, a uh, 
piece of string attached to an end of a stick trying to catch a fish. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Hey, give me two seconds. I need to go blow my nose. All right. Maybe mute yourself, just in case. Never mind. All right, that's where we're going to go ahead and end this episode. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you enjoyed any dimension of this episode. We do appreciate your support. Thank you so much. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.